Uh, 22, we're into integers now. Put an appropriate scale on the given number line, so we're expecting something like that. Mark the following integers, so you can see, and we did uh, examples of this, you can see those big uh, marks there, which clearly show on the number line, not above, not below, not floating around, on the number line, where the numbers are. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Ellie works in the city, so she parks on level negative 5, which is like a basement level, and then she goes all the way up to 31, so you needed to find the difference between those, right? If you wanted to, I noticed some people drew a diagram, so there's like a building, and there is, you know, level 31, and she is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 below ground, right? So she's got to go all the way up those 31, and she also has to go up those 5, and that's where the 36 number came from. All right, we uh, named the operations. If you said equals, we that wasn't wrong, but equals is not an operation. It's just saying these two things are equal to one another. 25, read the question really carefully. I know lots of us got tripped up on this, and it is tricky because you're rushing through, yeah? It says which day, which day, not what was the lowest minimum temperature. It's which day had the lowest minimum temperature. So that's why we wanted you to answer Sunday and then Wednesday for part B. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me, last question under integers, and I'll just let you have a look at that working there. I hope it's um, reasonably clear and you can see. Uh, this last question, if you're wondering, oh, where, where were the two marks? Most people approached it like this. You multiply across on the top, which gives you negative 32, and then you multiply across on, sorry, you uh, subtract these on the bottom, which gives you two, but that gives you a fraction you could simplify, right? So that's where that second mark was from. Okay, fractions, we're at the tail end. Which of the following numbers is the largest? So you can see the answer was C. Uh, we're expecting you to maybe just do a multiplication. Okay, half of 100, that's going to be 50. A quarter of 200, that's also 50. And you can go on and on and on, and you'll find out C is the largest one. Uh, draw a picture to show two-thirds of half shaded. So there were lots of ways to get this one right, and I see lots of answers around that are different to this one, which got a tick. Can you see the way it was approached? I would have thought about it as, okay, just look at two-thirds of a half. Let's get a half first, right? So this left-hand side of my rectangle is half of the rectangle. And then subsequent to that, we said, well, okay, if I break it up to thirds, this is two of them, right? So that's the way that it was drawn, but you could have drawn it in a whole bunch of different ways. Uh, using two of the numbers, I don't know why this is across two pages, sorry about that. Um, form a fraction that's close to one but less than one. So um, you've got lots of different options, um, but uh, sorry, you've got really trying to get as close as possible. You want the biggest numbers possible. If you had a half or three quarters, all those kinds of things, there's going to be a bigger gap between you and one. Okay. Bill went on a walk in an Australian national park. He drew this graph. And this is about fractions again, showing the proportions. So on the last page, I think it is, two-fifths is the fraction of the birds that were rosellas. Because you can see if you do a if you had a ruler with you, you could measure each of these sections out and you could find out how much of it was there as a proportion of the whole thing. Ah, now this one was quite sneaky. Um, the answer was two-thirds. How do we work out that this is two-thirds? This time I am gonna ask. Who wants to, who got this question right and want to explain how they went about it? Daniel. I've had groups of triangles in the hexagon. Okay, sure. Um, so for example, we might say, okay, there's going to be a triangle that can fit there. That's the same size. I might make this a bit thicker. I could do the same thing over here, the same thing over here. And then raise your hand if you had something like that. Yeah? Excellent. Okay, fantastic. From there, you can see, oh, look, I've got six triangles in the hexagon. But the whole big triangle has nine triangles, right? So if you have six divided by nine, that converts into two thirds. 